Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, the 20 most popular, actually it's more than 20, but most popular testosterone booster supplements. And I'm going to rank them based on whether you're wasting your money or not. I want to go from garbage all the way to great. And what am I going to use to rank this? I'm going to use the scientific literature and my two decades of experience doing this shit. All right, let's get straight to it. So you guys already know how I feel about supplements, right? To me, they're too risky, you know, um, so you should only pick them. You should only focus on them if the ROI is worth it, right? I might make another list where I just focus on return on investment. But for this one, I'm going to look at effectiveness. Is it effective? How do we know if it's effective? I'm not using anecdotes. I'm using data, actual objective research, the scientific literature, human randomized control trials where we're giving one group a placebo and the other group the supplement, right? And I need those repeated over and over again for me to be confident, right? I don't care about one random study from 1933, okay? I don't care about a random study right that's a case study or that's not peer reviewed or whatever no i want high quality research and ideally meta analysis right so that's how you remove the noise the the uh, the bs promotions out there from what actually works All right so let's pick um let's pick them a random All right creatine so for some reason people market creatine as a testosterone booster it's not really a testosterone booster can it increase testosterone of course but it'll be indirectly it'll be indirectly you know, through multiple mechanisms. Uh, but as far as a direct testosterone boost, no. So even though I recommend creatine, I think everyone should be on creatine. Um, obviously, not medical advice. Uh, it's not promoted as a testosterone booster, right? And it's not really a testosterone booster. It has a lot of effects uh, cognitively, cognitive effects. It has a lot of effects on muscle mass, a lot of effects on myostatin, a lot of effects on energy levels. Um, Well-researched, but it's not a testosterone booster per se. Um, as far as DHT, again, I told you guys, you cannot use one study to make conclusions. There's one study that shows that creatine increased the DHT. That study, number one, was never replicated. So that's a big red flag. And number two, it's old as shit, right? So wait until more studies come out. Trust me, if creatine boosts DHT, I'll be the first to make a video about it because you guys know Team DHT over here. All right, so I'm going to put creatine at good, but not for testosterone boosting, right? For mainly all the other effects. And benefits creatine has all right next we have honey gold weed i'm gonna put that at waste your money right it's not effective at boosting testosterone on humans that is and the magnitude even if it does increase testosterone the magnitude is not enough to make it worthwhile some people get you know effects from it but it's hard to tell if it's placebo or not if you look at the scientific literature on humans not just on animals right i always look at both it's not a great testosterone booster Next, we have magnesium. I'm going to put it at great, not just because of its effect on testosterone, but because of its effects on free testosterone, right? Sex hormone binding globulin, but also its effects on health in general. And most of you guys, believe it or not, are not eating enough magnesium. So I'm going to put it at great. Next, we have fedoja. I'm going to put waste of money. You're wasting your money, guys. Oh, I'm so mad for the people who promoted this thing. Guys, fedoja has no peer-reviewed human randomized control trials, right? Let alone double blind studies, let alone crossover studies. We need more evidence. I'm not saying it doesn't work, right? But as of right now, you're wasting your money. We have animal studies on it, but even those are not conclusive because they do show a lot of toxicity risk, right? So for those regressors, for boosting testosterone in humans, you're wasting your money as of right now. If new research comes out, I'll be the first to make a video saying, all right, guys, we have emerging evidence um, from well-designed, well-controlled studies. As of right now, all you're getting is placebo, not to mention you're getting the risk as well. Next, we have diaspartic acid. Diaspartic acid, I'm putting it at waste of money, right? Years, years, years ago, I think one or two studies came out showing the benefit and everyone went crazy, but emerging research came and showed that no, there's no significant benefit on testosterone, at least not long term. Uh, so that's another reason why I keep telling you guys, you can't just pick one study and be like, see, one study said this. You, the, the whole goal of science is to replicate things. It has to be replicated, right? Because the sample sizes on most studies are too small. So you can't just use one study. We need multiple. So as of right now, if you're buying diaspartic acid for testosterone, you're wasting your money. Again, if more research comes out, I'll be the first to tell you. I'm not biased. I'm not sponsored by any of these motherfucking companies. I have no dog in this fight. Next, you have ZMA. Now, this one is tricky. I'm going to put it at gambling, right? And the only reason why it's even high is because it has zinc and magnesium, which are obviously great testosterone boosters. But as far as most ZMA supplements out there, based on the studies, the body of evidence, 
um, you gambling, right? You might get an effect, you might not. So I'm going to put that gambling. Next, we have ashwagandha. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, and I have to say unfortunately. This one is that good, right? Because, again, I have to be by. I mean, sorry, I have to be objective. Was that a food and slip? Um, it has a lot of studies on it. It has a lot of animal studies, a lot of human studies. And um, the effect is also pretty good, right? You're getting around, you know, 20% boost in tea on average. Again, it's not huge. It's not massive. But that is going from 1,000 to 1,200, right, which is decent. Um, so the only reason I'm putting it at good is because, again, it has a lot of human studies, animal studies. Um, it has a lot of OCT. So it's not just random human studies. It's randomized control trials. And it's also showing an effect on cortisol and other things. So it is a good supplement. Of course, like every supplement, you got to make sure you're getting it from a good source because a lot of them are underdosed. A lot of uh, supplement companies put a lot of uh, toxic metals, you know, whether they do it on purpose or not. Um, and remember, supplements are not regulated. So you got to be very careful. Make sure you're getting it from a trusted source and make sure you're cycling the bitches, right? You don't want to take them every fucking day for the rest of your life. Uh, all right, so I'm going to put that one at good. Uh, next, we have betaine. All right, I'm also going to put that at good because we have a lot of studies on it, including a most recent one that I posted in the, uh, I think I posted in the school community. By the way, join the school community while it's still free. It won't be free for a long time. If it's not in the school community, I think I posted it on Instagram. But yeah, there's a recent study that came out, I think about two, three years ago, uh, and it was also replicated, showing great effects, not just on testosterone, but also on cortisol. The reason I'm not putting it in great is, once again, even though the studies were good, I need more data. Um, next we have, uh, boron. I'm also going to put boron at, boron, I'm going to put at grape. Yeah, I'm going to put boron at grape because most of you guys are not getting enough boron from your diet anyway. And, um, I tend to put dietary, uh, micronutrients higher than regular herbs and supplements, right? Because you need them not just for testosterone, but for other functions. So boron, amazing for testosterone, amazing for DHT, free testosterone, lowering inflammation, uh, modulating SHBG, modulating interleukin-6, blah, blah, blah. Great, great, great nutrient. And again, you can get it from foods, which is what I always tell people. Get the majority of your nutrients from foods, not supplements. Um, supplements should be a backup plan. Right? I use supplements myself, but again, as a backup plan. If it is a bad day, I wasn't able to hit my macros or my micros, then I supplement with these bitches, right? But most of the time, uh, whole foods. Um, and for the reasons I explained before. Next, we have fenugreek. I'm going to put that one at gambling because, unfortunately, the study, the studies are high, right? There, there, there's a lot of studies on fenugreek. I was actually surprised, right? There's a lot of studies on fenugreek compared to like 10 years ago. There was not a lot. Now, there's a ton of studies on fenugreek. And overall, they do show a benefit effect on testosterone, but the mechanisms are still unclear. In fact, some of them even show a decrease in DHT, which obviously we're not about that life. So, uh, so you're kind of gambling, right? You might take fenugreek you know, and get an effect, uh, or you might not, you know, so I'm going to put in gambling, uh, and I'll move it higher when more research comes out. Next, we have Shilajit, guys, oh my goodness, again, Shilajit, somewhere between waste of money and gambling, for now, I'm going to put in waste of money, and I'm going to tell you why, even though, even though the, the supplement is promising, which is promising, if you look at the actual studies, again, it's all about the RCTs, if you look at the randomized control trials, first of all, we don't have a lot on humans. Um, and two, the effect is not even massive, right? So it's similar to the effect of ashwagandha in terms of magnitude of testosterone increase, but it does not have as many studies as ashwagandha does, right? Ashwagandha has a ton of studies behind it. Um, so for now, I'm putting Shilajit at waste of money until we get quality research on humans uh, and also until they're replicated. In that case, I'm going to move it higher. It might go to, to great, you know? Again, I'm objective. No dog in this fight. <laughs> Next, we have system, same thing, same thing, waste some money. Oh, man, that's how you know. Guys, this is how you know that fitness influencers are full of shit. You want to find frauds? Look at people who promote products that don't have a lot of evidence behind it. They're just looking for the next thing to promote for views and clicks. They don't give a fuck about your health. They don't give a fuck about the side effects. If they did, they will wait for data before they promote something. You know how many influencers out there are promoting these supplements? Even though when you just take, you just spend an hour looking at the literature, they don't even hold up a candle to the things up there, right? But that's the world that we live in. Influencers don't care about the audience. They just care about views and clicks. Guys, there's a ton of stuff out there that I would love to make videos on. You want to know why I don't? Because the research is not up to date yet. The research is not fully supported, right? So I could go out there and make videos and I'd be like, oh, this booster starts on 300% to get views and clicks and sales. 
but I'd be lying to my audience, right? So anybody who's recommending these things, they're frauds. Now, if they're making a video saying, hey, we're not sure about this, you know, try, see what happens, then that's a different story. But anyone who's saying definitively, like, oh, yeah, this increases the size on, they are full of shit, or they can't interpret the literature. Next, we have ginseng, same thing, so far, waste of money, right? Uh, not enough human studies, and the few human studies we have, the few studies we have don't even show a massive increase in testosterone, right? And again, not only are we trying to increase testosterone, but remember, we're also trying to increase net androgen status, which is all that matters at the end, your androgen receptor signaling, as well as your anti uh, as well as reducing your anti-androgens. All right, next we have caffeine. Believe it or not, this one's going to strike a lot of people. Caffeine goes in good, right? We have a lot of data showing caffeine increasing testosterone. The reason I'm not putting it in great is because, one, you can't take it all the time, right? Uh, you, you're going to become um, desensitized to it. But two, if you take too much caffeine, you're actually going to interfere with sleep, and you might actually increase cortisol. So that's the only reason I'm not putting it in great. But... Uh, it's definitely good because it, it works on trained men, it works on normal men, it works on animals, um, and it has some effects on reducing uh, estradiol, the main estrogen. Same thing with coffee, right? The main active ingredient is caffeine. So coffee also goes in good, right? has a lot of benefits. Coffee actually has antioxidants, believe it or not, but people overdo it. People abuse coffee and caffeine, and not only they get desensitized, but they upregulate their cortisol too much. So... I'm going to put it at good. Just be careful. There's an inverter U curve to everything here on this list. Next, we have L-carnitine. Now, that one is not promoted. It's not marketed as a testosterone booster. It's mainly marketed as an androgen receptor booster. But keep in mind, guys, the reason why carnitine increases androgen receptors is mainly because it's an antioxidant. It has antioxidant properties. That's all it is. So I'm going to put carnitine at gambling for now because even though we have a lot of data on carnitine, we don't, have we don't have a lot of direct data on carnitine increasing testosterone. We have some on carnitine increasing androgen receptors, but like I said, it's mainly through its antioxidant effect, right? So we need studies that compare carnitine to other antioxidants to see if carnitine is increasing androgen receptors more than just your generic antioxidant. So for now, I'm going to put it at gambling. Also, you could just get it from steak, guys. You're getting a lot of carnitine from steak. Um, and don't worry about the bioavailability thing, right? The, the carnitine from red meat is a lot more bioavailable than the one from supplements anyway. Next, we have vitamin D3. Obviously, great. Everybody should be on vitamin D. I made a whole video years ago about sunlight and vitamin D. Watch that so I don't go into too many details. But that one has a ton of evidence and the magnitude is, uh, is, is pretty good. Uh, next, we have uh, Tribulus terrestris. I can't pronounce that shit for the life of me. That one I'm going to put at gambling, right? We do have some data on humans and on rats. Uh, some are showing an increase in testosterone. Some are not. Some are showing uh, no change in testosterone, but an increase in uh, net androgen signaling. So sex drive goes up, mood, energy, things like that. So I'm going to put in gambling for now until we get more research. So if you have the money to throw at it, go for it. Again, I'm not recommended by any of these brands. These are just random pictures I got from Google Images, right? So I'm not promoting or recommending any of these brands. Do your own research, bitch. All right, next we have maca root. Waste some money. Waste some money. Right now, the research is not conclusive on the effect of maca root on testosterone. Next, we have your standard testosterone boosters, right? I don't care what company it's from. Garbage. Garbage. And I'm going to tell you why. One, we don't have literally studies showing uh, a specific company's testosterone boosters right we don't have a lot of rcts on that uh, if we do then it's probably one or two and that's not enough it's not even enough to do a meta-analysis so for me i dismiss it number two they're massively underdosed massively underdosed i've been telling you guys about this for years and i'm proven right year after year most supplements are underdosed that's why i keep saying you're wasting your money you know even if you think it's a trusted source so garbage so not only you're not getting a big increase in testosterone assuming you have a healthy diet lifestyle whatever but you, it's under those. You're wasting your money. So garbage. Next, we have, uh, the fuck is this one? Oh, turkesterone. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started. Even though I'm a big promoter of ecdysterone and turkesterone from foods, as well as using it to boost testosterone from a supplement, garbage. Garbage. What are you guys doing? I've told you time and time again to avoid spending money on ecdysterone or turkesterone supplements. I've been telling you guys this since day one. Before it was even popular. Before all these snake oil salesmen hopped on it. Go watch my videos. Well, I told you guys, get it from Whole Foods. Right? 
Now, you're not going to get a massive dose from Whole Foods, but based on the studies, you're getting enough to have a bioavailable effect. Okay? Avoid using testosterone or testosterone to boost testosterone. I challenge you to find one, just one human randomized control trial that shows testosterone or agdesterone increasing testosterone. Just find one. I'll wait, bitch. Exactly. You didn't find one. Because it doesn't exist. It's all a lie, guys. Just stealing your money. Now, does that mean that agdesterone and testosterone don't have positive effects? Of course not. They have a ton of positive effects. I made, a, again, multiple videos on that. You could check them out. But I do not recommend you get them from supplements for the simple fact that they're underdosed. And again, we don't have studies comparing those supplements to, uh, to placebos as far as, you know, their effects on testosterone. Uh, next, we have uh, Tonkara Lee. Now, this one is going to go in good, right? Again, I was surprised years ago because, again, you guys don't want to keep up with the literature. I'm reading 10 or 20 studies a day minimum. So every study that comes out on testosterone is going through my desk. And... Unfortunately, or well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but Tonka Ali actually uh, passes a lot of tests. There's a lot of studies on there, a lot of rat studies, a lot of human studies, and they're showing a uh, consistent increase in testosterone. Now, it also depends on the dose, right? Some studies don't show a big increase, but if you look at the studies, uh, the dose is not high enough. Also, it's one of the few supplements that shows an increase in testosterone, even if uh, the person is healthy and young, right? Because most studies on testosterone are done on like old men who are full of inflammation and stuff. So it's one of the few supplements that shows an increase in T um, and also an increase in free testosterone as well, right? Which is obviously more important, even if the person is healthy. Now, of course, as always, more studies is better, but as of right now, I'll put it in good based on the literature, right? I gotta got be objective. Next, we have zinc. Zinc, I wanna put it in great, right? Ton of studies on humans and on animals. Uh, if, if you need to know why zinc increases testosterone, then yeah, you late to the party. Watch all my videos on it, ton of studies on it, and the magnitude is huge. Now, of course, if you have enough zinc in your diet, then more zinc is not going to do anything, but that applies to everything, right? And last but not least, the best testosterone-boosting supplement of all time is a freaking healthy, balanced diet. That's it. That's the king of testosterone boosters. All right, that's it. I hope this video helps. Join the school community while it's still free. Support the channel by buying the ebooks, my testosterone diet ebook, and uh, visit the website for coaching, consultation, all that stuff. Huge, huge sell. All right, peace out, guys.